All right. This time we are doing absolute values and in particular, I'm just gonna start with numbers and what we're gonna do is this one, we're just gonna get rid of the absolute values in each expression, which I know is the anxiety that's immediately created as soon as you see absolute value and then we're gonna throw it in limits and functions and we're gonna say, do these things and are you continuous here or these types of things, you know, like, the real story is how do I get rid of the absolute values? I want the bars, it's like they're in prison what's happening is we are going to get uh, liberate everybody all of these numbers who want to be liberated from the bars we're going to do this exactly so first of all before we do this i'm going to remind you and they usually will use an a or an x so what is this it turns out absolute value is the guy at the party going around making everybody positive if you were positive or at least non-negative I leave you alone, you're good to go. If you are negative at the party, I throw another negative at you and then I make you positive. So this is the first part that's hard in these ones. In this, we say, hey, you're yourself. How do you get rid of the bars? You don't have to do anything. You're just, you're allowed out of prison if you're non-negative. So if A is greater than or equal to zero, as long as you're being non-negative, you're free to roam. But if you're negative, I'm going to put another negative on you, which makes that positive. And this is the first hard thing to do. You see a negative, so you're thinking this is less than zero, but A was already less than zero. And so now here, let's use the properties of inequalities. If A is less than zero, and I multiply by negative one, which is less than zero, then multiplying both sides by this will give me negative A is greater than negative zero, which is zero. So that negative A, even though negative is there, is a positive thing. So that's, I think, the first confusion with absolute value. You see a negative and you think he's negative, but he was already being negative, so this negative is making him positive. Absolute value is the positive maker. So now that we've done the rant, that's really what's being happening. Every time we ask, how do I get rid of the bars? I'm asking, is that thing on the inside positive or negative? You're actually asking yourself a question, and this is where it gets tricky is this positive or negative? And we're gonna to have to do a side calculation to find that out. If he's positive, I can just get rid of the bars. If he's negative, all I have to do is flip it around and make it positive. So, let's do that. Also, they continually do that in the book, but I don't think they actually ever show. So, these ones are the exact same distance. Absolute value is one dimensional distance. These guys are the same distance from the origin. This one is 13 units from to the left of the origin. This one's 13 units to the right of the origin. So. Let's actually solve the problem now that we said all that. You see, sometimes there's a whole lot of information that not wasn't necessarily useful for the specific problem, but knowing it is going to make the problem a whole lot easier. So having that in mind, this is just equal to itself since, and how do you justify it? 13 is a positive number, I hope you would agree with me. So you can just strip anything that's positive, you're allowed to just strip off of it, off the absolute values. If it's a number, you can probably readily tell whether it's positive or negative because you're used to the real number line. Once we start putting variables in there or something where you can't recognize and I start throwing irrational numbers in there, now you're not familiar of where this lies on the real number line and you can't tell whether it's positive or negative or again and then you have a hard time stripping off the absolute values. The second one, is exactly the same answer, but don't just write 13. The definition said this is equal to negative negative 13, which is the positive number 13. The extra negative made it positive. Since why? Negative 13 is less than zero. That's the real justification for any two numbers. And notice that they're both the same distance, 13 units from the origin. This one's 13 units to the left. This one's 13 units to the right. scale, not the scale. So that's what we're saying. Now extending that to the third one, nothing's going to change but that question we're really asking is this now, the square root of 2 minus 3. What I really want to know is, is the inside positive or negative? And I don't know. And I'm going to guess you don't either. That's why you're watching the video. So I have to do a side calculation. What I'm going to do is, and the best way to do this is, first I try to build an inequality based on this to find out whether he's positive or negative. So the first inequality I'm going to do is, I know that one, I try to find the perfect square on either side of a square root. 
So I know that one is less than two, because that's one squared, is less than four, which is two squared. So one is less than two is less than four. And then what I do is square root this inequality, and that will say one is less than the square root of two is less than two. That tells me where on the real number line one and two, I now know that root two is somewhere between one and two. What that does for me is, you also have to ask yourself, what was I trying to do? I was trying to compare root two and negative, or adding negative three to this thing. So what I really want is this inequality. I can see that root two is less than two, and two is definitely less than three. So then uh, these are all the little details, but then I'm gonna use transitivity of inequality. If this is less than this, and two is less than three, then the square root of two is less than three. And why have I done that? With some experience now, I can subtract three from both sides and now I'll be able to tell whether the thing I had was positive or negative and it turns out it's negative. So what that now tells me is subtracting three from both sides gives me root two minus three is less than zero. So I know it's negative. That thing is negative is what happened. I know it's less than zero, so what do I do to it? Now that I know it's less than zero, the answer is strictly negative root two minus three, which is three minus root two, which is now positive. He wants mic drops, mic drop. It's not a microphone, it's a marker drop. I'll get it right one of these days. Math is hard. <laughs>